Dear student, this is my third lecture on the elastic property of the materials. And in this chapter, with the following topics. Uh, basically, here we are going to deal with the details about the beams and expression for bending moment. These are the two topics which I am going to cover in this lecture. I hope it will be highly beneficial for all of you. So let's start. Let us suppose this is a the filaments. So these are the parallel filaments. So these filaments have been placed one over the others in a parallel way, which is going to constitute a beam. So this is the, just like a beam which has been constituted from from this. Okay. So as you can see, so this is this is a beam, right? So this beam is has been made by the different filaments so these are the different filaments that have been taken over here so what you can do you can just imagine a scale so we have taken a, a meter scale which you are using in the physics lab so we have taken a meter scale and on the meter scale you have the top layer and then you have the bottom layer that meter scale is being bent so this is the meter uh, scale which is being bent over here so here you can see so here we are bending this meter scale so like this so all its layer is bending so one by one all the layer is bending as you can see in this diagram so now you locate here the different layers so this is the top layer and this is the bottom most layer so we have the different layers top layer and bottom layer now you locate in this you will find that the top layer of this is getting elongated if you are going to apply the force and bottom most layer is getting contracted all right so therefore the contraction what we can say the contraction is that is elongation is increasing as we are moving from the lowest surface to the topmost surface so as we are moving the this this is going to increase all right so from here to here the elongation slowly is increasing so at the all, all, therefore uh, what we can say at the topmost level the elongation will be maximum and at the bottom level the elongation will be minimum therefore therefore uh, what we can say as we are moving from the top to bottom from top to bottom like this so this is how we are moving so what is happening elongation is slowly decreasing and therefore we'll be getting in between one layers where there is neither elongation nor contraction because what is happening after this instead of the elongation will have the contraction and the lowest lowest most surface it has got highest contraction so the contraction so we what we are saying here we are getting one particular layer so you can look at this layer you see this layer properly this layer there is neither the elongation nor contraction and this layer where there is no uh, elongation or contraction so again i am representing this with the yellow line this will be called as the neutral axis so what is the neutral axis what is the neutral axis if you are going to bend, bend the scale so in between there is a layer where there is neither the extension or the elongation nor there is contraction and that axis will be called as neutral axis so let us see what what we, this is what has been represented so what is the beam beam is defined as a rod or circular or rectangular here we have to take a rectangular bar of a uniform cross section whose length is very large than its breadth and thickness so its width uh, that is the length is going to be larger than its breadth and thickness and dimension of course the, the uh, length must be very very large compared to its breadth and thickness all right let's continue the characteristic of the beam the beam may be considered to be made of the large number of the thin uh, plane horizontal layers plus one over the others each layer in turn consists of a number of the thin parallel longitudinal metallic fiber or fila filament so what we are saying it can be the fiber or filament arranged side by side as i have represented in this diagram so this scale this scale has been made with the parallel lines from this so these are the parallel lines so this is how what has been placed over here there so this constitute your beam 
so uh, what i define when a straight beam is bent as i i explain you that what we are going to do we are going to bend this so when this is going to be bent the outer layer get elongated and lower layer get contacted but one layer between them is neither getting elongated nor it is getting contracted and that layer as i define you is called neutral axis so here this will be your neutral axis this axis is called neutral axis which is neither going to be elongated nor it is going to be contracted okay fine so what is the neutral axis the neutral axis is the axis in the cross section of the beam or shaft along which there is no longitudinal stress or strain so because there is no contraction or elongation so no stress or strain is acting on this okay let's move further the elongation or contraction of any layer is proportional to the distance so as i told you as you are moving from here to upper surface from the neutral axis you are moving to the upper surface the elongation is increasing and similarly if you are moving down so what is happening contraction is increasing right so as you are going up let us suppose we are going x1 x2 x3 x4 and here we have come to the x4 this is the x4 we have come so here the elongation will be maximum similarly here the contraction will be maximum all right so what we are saying the elongation or contraction of of any layer is proportional to its distance from the neutral surface hence outer layer are maximum elongated or contracted so outer layer does mean any any that is the top surface top surface or the bottom surface it is getting maximum elongated or contracted all right so that makes you the b now we are going to find out what is the bending moment so bending moment is defined as the total moment of the force acting on upper and lower surface of the beam so you have seen you have seen the beams so therefore if you are going to bend the beam if you are going to bend the beam so some force is acting on the upper surface some force is acting on the lower surface so the total force which is acting on the beam is called the bending moment right so i can just give you an example what do you do you take a meter scale hold in your hand properly uh, stiffly and let us suppose say your meter scale and on other hand or other side you put the load slowly you go on increasing the load what you will find you will find some stress on your finger and if you are not able to hold it properly you will not be able to hold your scale the scale will come out from your hand so what is happening that is because of the your bending moment a force which is acting so what we are going to calculate over here we are going to calculate the expression for bending moment so this is the expression for this expression of the bending moment we are going to calculate in this lecture all right so what we have done in the same uh, scale we have taken so this is your a b this is your topmost layer and again we have c and d this is your bottommost layer naturally this is your in between ef is the in between is the layer so this is your neutral axis right so this is what has been shown in this diagram now what we are going to do so this one end of this is fixed so this end has been kept fixed just like you are holding the scale in your in your hand and one one part is fixed another part you are putting the load so here we have we are putting the load this is the load that we are we are giving on this all right so therefore what is going to happen let us see if you are going to do this so let's proceed further so this now what we have done a small part of this beam has been taken so what we have done here p b g f q c so this is what the small part of this has been taken of course load w is already there okay so now let us see in this case what is happening now we have put the load under the load under the load it has got bended and it is making a arc so what is happening it is making a arc so if it is making a arc so naturally it will have a radius of curvature so this will call as the radius of curvature here i have taken from the top surface right so this is the radius of curvature so what is happening this surface has got bent 
this is maximum bending is there so because of this bending it is creating a radius of curvature now i will give you a simple example let us suppose you all of you use the plane mirror and all of you know what is the radius of curvature in case of the plane mirror is infinite why it is infinite because it is completely plane now same mirror if you are going to bend then it will have the radius of curvature it will have a numerical value of radius of curvature so exactly in the similar way so that mirror you call concave mirror or convex mirror the way you are going to fold it so exactly in the same way here we are going to have a radius of curvature of the beam which we have bended so let's proceed what we can find find over here so the same cross-sectional area we are showing over here all right on which we have put a particular load so consider the beam that is a b c d of the length this is the length we have taken as l and w is the load that we have we have given upper surface is getting elongated and of course they will uh, feel a force and lower surface is also getting contracted and because of that also you have a force so lower portion dc get contracted and experience an outward force whereas the neutral filament ef so this is the interesting thing this is the neutral filament this is the neutral filament ef in this neutral filament there is no elongation or there is no contraction and therefore no force will be acting on this all right the beam experiences two opposite couples as a result of of that the beam will come in rest so if you are going to put a load on this after a particular certain interval of the time the beam will come to the rest okay let's put now again as i explain you the small part a small part of this has been taken now from here that is from the neutral axis this is the neutral axis that we have taken from the neutral axis we have taken the arc this is the arc that we have taken right that we are calling radius of curvature so this radius of curvature has been taken from the neutral axis this we are calling as r so this two arc that is two radius is making a particular angle over here and let us suppose that angle we are calling as theta so naturally if the theta is very small theta is equal to angle is equal to arc upon radius so theta equal to what we can write gf upon go or r gf upon r so this is your this is here we say there is no bending now what we are going to do from here we are moving a particular distance r and we have come to the top surface pb so now this r is going to make the total radius is equal to how much r plus capital r this is your r and this value will be your small r this value will be your small r so the total value you are getting is capital r plus small r and with respect to this we are going to do the calculation so as we have already seen the bending moment of a beam is equal to the restoring couples acting on the beam because of which it is coming in the rest so this is what i have told you there so we have taken a small cross section of this and this is what is being written gf is the is your neutral surface and with respect to that we are going to do the calculation so o is the a point so this is your radius of curvature all right so let's uh, move further all right same cross section uh, has been shown again over here so now this is what we are saying the the gf this is the arc this is your arc gf is your arc so what will this value of gf is equal to r into theta as theta is equal to r upon radius so gf is equal to how much gf equal to r into theta where angle this is the angle theta which it is it has been made by this now let us see let's calculate what is the uh, angle uh, made by pb outermost layer so naturally this pb is also making the same angle theta so if i calculate what is the length of this r pb in terms of this r and this capital r plus a small r so what we can say this will equal to capital r this capital r plus a small r this is your total length of the arc right so this p this topmost layer what we can say this topmost layer is equal to pb this is your pb this is nothing this this we have taken as pb so this pb is equal to r plus small r into theta all right so what we can say naturally this is the this is this gf is without any bending and 
PB is with the bending. If I'm going to subtract with this, then what we will getting? We'll getting what is the change in the length. And therefore, we'll be able to find out what is the strain on this. So what will this strain? So linear strain, as we know, is equal to increase in the length upon initial length. So what is the increase in the length? So increase length is equal to, this is your increase length. This, this is your increase length. So this is your R plus R into theta here. R plus R into theta. And R theta for this, for this you have, you have got R theta. This is your neutral axis, right? So we have subtracted R theta. So how much we are getting? Just you do the simple calculation. So linear strength we are getting is equal to small r upon capital R. This is your, this is your simply a linear strain. Okay. So let's proceed further. Now let's calculate what will be Young's modulus. So Young's modulus is equal to stress upon strain. Okay. So from here, linear stress. From here, just do the cross multiplication. Linear stress is equal to y. This y into into linear strain into this linear strain so y this is your young's modulus equal to your this y and linear strain you have calculated over here this is the linear strain that you have calculated r upon small r so that value we have substituted over here now from here let's calculate what will be the force so stress is equal to force per unit area stress is equal to force per unit area so if i am going to multiply this strain by cross-sectional area, sorry, this is stress, by the cross-sectional area, then we'll be getting the force. So what will the force? Linear stress into cross-sectional area. Because what, what is the stress? Force per unit area. All right? So this is what we have taken. This is your Y, uh, R upon R. This is your stress into cross-sectional area. We have taken A is the cross-sectional area of this beam. So we have multiplied by this A, this A with this A. Now, let's calculate what is the moment of the force. So, what will the moment of the force? Moment of the force is called force into perpendicular distance. So, moment of the force is your force into perpendicular distance. So, what is the force we have calculated? This is the value of the force that we have calculated. This is the value of the force that we have calculated. Multiply this with the perpendicular distance. What is the perpendicular distance? This is small r. So, what we are getting? We have multiplied this by small r here. So we are getting capital R A into R squared. This is your moment of force. Okay. So the total moment of the force acting on the upper and lower surface. So now this is the moment of the force acting on a cross, small cross-sectional area. So what is the total moment of the force acting because of the both the lower and upper surface? So this is what we have to calculate. So what we can do? What we can do if you are going to take the summation of this if you are going to take the summation of this that is just we are or you can say we are going to take the integral of this this one this value then we can find out what is the total total value right so we can do the integration of this so let us see this is what we have done in the next slide so the Bending moment of the force is equal to total moment of the force acting from the upper and lower surface of the beam because the force is acting both on the upper surface and the lower surface. So what we have done, we are going to just do the summation of that. So y upon r is your constant. We have taken out of that summation a r square, a r square. And this sum of a r square is called geometrical moment of inertia. This is called, here I have not written uh, moment of inertia. This is called geometrical moment of inertia. And I, we are representing this by IZ. So what we can say, this value is coming out equal to, equal to some Y upon R summation AR square. So AR square equal to how much? AIZ. So the total value, what we can say, this is the bending moment. So bending moment of the beam will equal to Y upon R into IZ. So this is the, bending of the force. Thank you. And we are going to use this bending moment in the next lecture. I hope this will be very useful for you. Thank you very much.